Good afternoon, Mark, uh, Mr. Ramsey. How are you? How are we doing today? Very good. Yourself? Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about um, Archer Betterby's brilliant performance over um, Alexander Vosdick. Were you surprised at him being able to uh, knock Vosdick out because the fight was very close on paper? It was a 50-50 fight, and I had a uh, Vosdick up at the time of the stoppage uh, slightly. Were you surprised that? Betterby was able to withstand Vosdick's um, volume and come back and knock him out. Not really, because uh, you need to know how uh, to see Archer every day in the gym, and he's doing that to, to almost everybody. To do to do well against him for one one, one round or two rounds, this is something. But to to be able to do that for ten or twelve rounds, this is a it's a long ride. And uh, we, we already know that uh, Grosnick was a, a good fighter. He's probably going to a little bit faster. He's probably going to uh, steal a, a couple of rounds here and there. But uh, uh, I was surprised, no, at all. Like, uh, actually, there was a plan at the planning. Now, outside of Archer Betterby, did you think that Vosdick was um, in the top two of light heavyweights? Would you consider him, outside of Archer Betterby, the best light heavyweight in the world? But right now, I think so. I think so. I think he's a he's a little bit more talented than that Bivol. Bivol is a good fighter, but to me, he you look at me more mechanic uh, fighter. And uh, I think like Sergey Kovalev just passed his prime, and uh, he's not, he's not the fighter that he was to be a couple of years ago. Uh, yes, after after the derby, I probably I think he's the best fighter. Now, Canelo Alvarez recently beat um, Kovalev, and after the fight, they were, you know, he's being asked questions about who he would fight next, and um, Betterbeev's name came up, and he said he wasn't concerned about having to fight Betterbeev, that he would welcome the challenge, but news just broke recently that he vacated the WBO light heavyweight title. Were you surprised that he did that, and when he did say that he would fight Betterbeev, did you believe it, and were you looking forward to that? I was not surprised because as a, as a coach or as a boxer, when when a reporter asks you a question like this, like you you want to show you're confident and, and you say, yeah, I'm ready to fight everybody. But the, the reality is, <laughs> and let, let's put this on negotiation and see if you really want to, to fight the Derby. I don't think so. I don't believe that. So what is going to be next for Arthur Betterbeef down the road? And how soon can we expect him back in the ring? We hope to see him uh, back in the ring probably the end of uh, February or some, uh, some, uh, somewhere in March. Uh, we, we're looking for the big, you know, Arthur past 30 years old, like not right now. We, we just want to go for the biggest challenge possible and, and for sure the better, better um, money fight also. But the, the thing is, right now we have a mandatory uh, challenger, uh, Falun Ming, who's a Chinese fighter, Southpaw, very good fighter, very good uh, Amateur pedigree, good good boxer, good challenge. But the thing is, we we have to look at all the other options. Also, maybe another an investigation fight, and this is what exactly uh, the management group who, who uh, work with Peterbi are doing right now. All right, let's talk about another one of your fighters, um, David Lemieux. Just moved up to um, 168 pounds, coming off a tough a tough fight with uh, Maskam uh, Bursak, split decision. Um, you know, David Lemieux obviously was heavily favored in that fight, but he, he had he had some rough patches there. Um, what did you think of his performance, and do you think that he'll be a good super middleweight, and do you think this was just probably a, maybe a tough style matchup for him? Well, the, the, the thing was, uh, all, it was almost one year uh, without fight for David. Uh, and and that was also the worst scenario for for the boxer and also for the coach. Like he is going to the floor like in, in a couple of first second of the fight, and, uh, especially like a fight like this. You want you want David to to box well and take your time and feel feel good in the ring before he, he put some uh, some energy into that fight. But uh, there was a kind of surprise for 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 me for him also, and. Um, after that, like we we already are, have two rounds under, and we have to uh, change our game plan uh, for that fight and force uh, the fight to be a war. And this is not the type of fight we want to do at the beginning. But uh, listen, uh, we, we will see. We uh, we're gonna give another another fight to David at the, at the, at 168. We're gonna uh, look at his reaction. 
And we choose also Burzak because it was a tough. We know, we already know, like, if he never gets tough, we want to see some rounds. We want to see something from David. We don't want, like, an opponent that he's going to knock out in one round. We we have, we want something to analyze after the fight, and uh, we, we have that uh, opportunity. So 168 pounds looks like it's going to be David's home for now, then. You don't envision him ever going back down to 160. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, you know, uh, we we uh, we did a couple of fights, uh, uh, a couple of last fights, and the performance was not really good. The, the level of energy was not good at 160. Uh, that was a little bit sophisticated because when we go to see specialists, the the doctor was saying uh, that he is able to do 160 again. But the thing is, for one reason or another, one like even struggle every time so so hard to make that 160 at one point he's another one like he's past 30 years old it's harder and harder to make the weight that we just decide to move into to 168 now obviously the goal is to become a champion again uh, and, and now it's going to be at 168 what fighter in this division what champion in this division do you think would be a great style matchup for david lemieux who, who are you guys gunning for but right now we don't have a fixed target. Like what we want to do is to to stabilize David's performance at 168, make sure that he do better than he did last time, and uh, we're probably gonna have another one or two fight before we're gonna target someone and just go like when you anyway when you fight at that level they are all, all good uh, good uh, champion and good fighter. Like we don't have any preference on, in terms of uh, of, uh, of a champion. All right. Well, I have to ask you a question that I'm sure, you know, in recent recent well, weeks that you've been having tons of questions about this. But I, I just have to ask this because I'm, I'm just curious because I haven't really heard your version of this. The fight with Oscar Rivas and Dillian White, so much controversy swirling around that fight with the drug test, with the gloves. Could you just, if you would, explain all of this controversy in, in your own words, from your vantage point, um, what went on? that night with all of the uh, supposed uh, controversies surrounding that fight? That was something very special, but, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the way, the way, the, the conclusion of all this, I was not surprised at all. When I came back to Montreal, uh, I told the media, like, the, all the media was asking us what's going to happen, and I told them nothing's going to happen. And, and, and they asked me why, why I have that, that type of... Uh, that, uh, that type of uh, explanation. I, I told them, listen, the, the history of boxing proved to us, like, to be honest, I don't, I don't believe people of boxing, the, the promoter, the sanction uh, bodies, uh, even, even the fans and the, and the reporter also, like, they don't care. They, 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 to be honest, they don't care. And, and Canelo Alvarez is a good example of this. He get, he get, he get passed. Now they're changing rules for him. People still buy pay-per-view. The, uh, the reporters forget about this history. But he's a cheater. <laughs> like, the same thing with Joe Sanders. And the same, uh, Billy Joe Sanders. Like, same. And why that was the second time? Like, to be honest, I don't, I don't really believe that people care about those things. And in this case, nothing happened. Like, so, uh, like they, they, they hire... Um, us, like the the, the true the, the information about the about the, the testing we never had any information about the B sample about the we don't have, even have information about the A sample what it is what uh, the substance and everything like it, it's a little bit it was a little bit and the WBC I don't know what they, they're doing but they don't I, for sure they don't protect the interest of the fighter like they don't push to see the to to have the truth on that story like. We don't have any any uh, any support from nobody in that in that in that history. The the second thing it was the gloves situation. Uh, the gloves situation was like you know the, the, after a win in you have uh, you have what we call like a glove selection and both cam have to go there select the glove and the other cam have the right to look at. The, the, the brand and also if the, the padding is okay, if everything is fine, we sign the glove and make sure that this is the glove they're going to give you in a dressing room the day after. And, and for 30 years in boxing, and this is always the way everywhere around the world they're doing stuff. But the night of the fight, 
and we did this draw selection. We select a, a, a brand from Italia, um, and 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 uh, the, the, the night of the fight, they just the guys who was um, uh, from my team in the dressing room of White came back to my dressing room and told me they want they, they want to use a, another pair of gloves, and I never see that of, of my life. And we went there to see what happened. And the thing was, again, the supervisor from the WBC support them, and also the, the, the UK Commission support them. They authorize them to do that move. And I never see that in my life. And at one point, the, 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 the new brand was a Fly. This is a, a brand from the UK. Uh, this is this is not the problem because we know that brand. It's a good it's a good glove. It's a it's a legal glove. This is not the point. The point is the the what what we do as a as a protocol usually was not respect. And what is that not respect was authorized by the WBC supervisor and also by the commission over there. I got you. So at no point in time were you going to approve or you you weren't in line with him using those gloves that he used on fight night you weren't you didn't approve of that at all correct no 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 but what we did at one point when i saw that even the commission want to support uh white uh clan and also the wbc the supervisor you look at us and, and say that he, this is uh this is like this here like you, see, you see that you don't have the support of nobody, and like I told you, I know the new glove. I know fly glove are are, are right. That's not the point. The point is the protocol that we like WBC just don't even respect their own protocol. In that. So you were just. At, at, well, I don't mean to. I have the option. I don't mean to interrupt you. I don't mean to interrupt you. So you, you just was were upset because protocol wasn't being followed. Is that is that your is that your position on this? Exactly. Okay. I don't care about the other other set of gloves because okay. the, the the mark is the brand is okay. Like it's it's, it's a brand that we know. It's a good brand. Like, this is not the, the the problem. The problem is in thirty years of boxing, I've never said I see that I see this before. Because I know Russ Amber spoke about it, and he, and he said that you you guys weren't allowed to inspect the uh, the new gloves once once they were chosen. Oh yeah. Is that correct? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yes, they bring to us. But I, they bring, uh, they bring another pair of gloves. They don't even let us inspect the glove of white because he already had it, uh, had his glove on his hands. What they did, they, they, they give us the the backup glove and they make us to, to look at it. But, oh wow! So neither, yeah. so neither yourself or Russ Amber were able to inspect those new gloves that he that he wore on the on the fight. On fight night. Yeah, Russ was Russ was able to to look at the at the glove on the hand, of, of, not, not not really uh, fully inspect because the, the glove was already in the end of the fight. Oh, so so basically, he was already wrapped up, and the gloves were already on on his on his hands, and and, and Russ couldn't even exp inspect the wraps. Is that is that what happened? Exactly. Wow, that's crazy. I've never I've never seen that, and then. And, then, and, now, and now I have the choice to just cancel the fight, and you have to understand that was the first yeah. uh, money fight of Rivas ever, or just go. And the fact that was there was a, a mark that we know that was again there was not the problem. The problem was that the, the protocol was not respect. Well, there, there, I mean, there's been other fights too where you know. Um, the opposing camp would go into a fighter's dressing room and the guy would be gloved up already and they would make a protest right then and there and then the guy would have to unglove and, and they would have to rewrap that i've seen that happen on, on certain occasions but obviously you didn't have the luxury of doing that because you you guys weren't the house fighter so it was either fight or not fight and i totally understand your position on that i mean there's there was not much you could do in that situation well, but especially when you have, you don't have the support from the, the supervisor and yeah. from the commission, like you have both uh, both body sanction who just tell you, you know, this is normal, this is the way it is. Now you have the choice, like you send your fighter or not. Wow. So basically, you felt like you guys were on an island unto yourselves. You had no support from the WBC. You obviously you had no support from um, from 
the British border control there. Uh, you know, basically, you guys w weren't the A side, you weren't the House fighter, so you basically had to just uh, fall in line, or, or the fight would have just been canceled. In a hurry. I got you. I got you. That's, that's, that's simple. So let me ask you this, because I, I, I watched the fight very intently, and I scored it, and I actually, even, even you know, with it, with all the controversy, subtract all of that, but I still think that um, I had Revis winning the fight. Now, when, when you were watching this fight, obviously, in the corner, you're, you're giving instructions and stuff. You're not scoring the fight. But did, how, how did you get a sense for what Revis was doing in there? How did you think the fight played out? Did you think that there was an argument for Revis winning the fight, or did you, or did you think that you know Dillian won the fight? How how did you feel the fight went from your vantage point? I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very honest to you. I I, I have the feeling that uh, White uh, win that fight. Okay. That was my feeling in the corner. Okay. Because maybe because I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a coach and I'm I'm from uh, outside and you know when you fight in the hometown of, of the other guys. Every uh, close around, I will give him to to White. I don't want to, as as a trainer, uh, like over over uh, like give give a fight. Maybe we don't have you know yeah. like, you need to to win around very clear. Yeah. when you you travel yeah. and uh, I had I had White ahead. Uh, that was but that was a very close cool fight. Okay, so you you felt as though it was a close competitive fight and and. Going in, you you knew any close rounds were definitely going to go his way. So, in other words, you're saying that you weren't expecting to get any favors there. Every round had to be won decisively, or you weren't going to get it. Basically, exactly. I got you. I got you. So, so let me ask you one last question, Mr. Ramsey. So, what's next for um, for Oscar Rivas? I'm sure this has been a, a big uh, weight on his shoulders, having to deal with all of this. Um, What's next for him? Do you do you feel as though he'll get another shot at, at, at some sort of title or some sort of eliminator? Because I, I, based off that performance, whether he, whether you feel he won or lost, he made a great account of himself, and he, he should be rewarded with with uh, some sort of eliminator or some sort of fight to put him back in position. Um, what's next? How do you, how, how do you see this unfolding for Oscar Rivas? But right now, he came back right away uh, to the gym like he's, he's always in the gym. He makes sure that he's going to be ready when the phone's going to ring. But the thing right now, we have, uh, we come from, uh, basically not me, but the, the management group who taking care of Rivas. Uh, they're coming uh, like from a long, a long process of trying to have information about the case and everything. Right now, they just try to find exactly what's going to be the next target and we we want him to fight probably uh probably also in february or or march something like this and uh we just uh he's just willing to to accept any kind of challenge like he's, he's there and i think he's one of the best heavyweight in the world yeah he did put a great performance on i was i was impressed with his performance so let me ask you one last question um for people who don't know are there any young up-and-coming fighters that you have uh, in the pipeline that maybe mainstream fans wouldn't know about? Are there any uh, young prospects that you got working working in your stable right now? Can you name a few of those guys, if you have any? Yes, I have a... Actually, I have a couple of uh, very uh, talented guys. Uh, we just saw one of them on, on, the, uh, on the net this weekend, Eric Bassinian, who just knocked out Saul Roman on the Golden Boy uh, card. He's a very good fighter. I have also Christian Mbili from France, uh, who's a is a good 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 fighter. But uh, I have that heavyweight Arslan Bek Mahmoudov, who just knocked out Samuel Peters in the in the first round. He is something special. He's something special, and uh, he's coming he's coming for real business. No no doubt. All right, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Ramsey. I, I greatly appreciate it, and uh, I really appreciate your honesty in this whole uh, situation with the uh, Dillian White. Um, fiasco, and um, I hope to see uh, see you and and Better Beef and the rest of your stable back in the ring soon. And uh, I wish you luck. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. All have right. Have a great day.